Is this thing on? Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Neil and this is Photo How To, a channel completely dedicated to photography. So let's jump in there with a little phrase. And speaking of photography, I think it's really important to try and stretch your creativity. I'll come on to that in a minute. But first, thank you for subscribing to my channel. I do hope you find this video and the other content I'm creating helpful. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. So there I was, I popped onto the internet and I went on to a world-renowned global distribution company's website. I then purchased small sachets of coloured powder, borrowed a dancer and I went up the local park just before sunset to try and capture some stunning photographs. Now I should add as a photographer sometimes, sometimes you'll get an idea of vision in your head how you'll visualise a shot. I have got about 90 minutes to capture this shot. Now that might seem straightforward. Doing some poses. So okay, what I'm, I'm going to set you up up there. I'm going to get my camera out. Yeah. Me and Joe will be down here. But you've got to consider composition. You've got to look at your camera setting. You've got to speak to the dancer to get the pose right. Then obviously, the vision in my head, I've got to make sure it's set up correctly. And then, I thought I'd be clever and just throw in some speed lights. I don't know where to put them. Well, we want, remember you want an arch over you, so your head's got to be facing that way. Why do we do this as photographers? Flash photography, I mean, pff, nothing like putting a bit of pressure on you. At the same time in the background, the sun's going down, so... I tend to do a bit of a practice shoot to start because it's warmed up and she's happy. I just need to stop you there just very, very quickly. If you are considering doing what I'm about to do, and you're going to use these powders, please Please read manufacturer's guidelines as to whether it's safe and where you can use it. Now, as the sun's setting, it is really important you get your camera setting right. And bear in mind, these are gonna change because obviously you are losing light as it goes along. So how I have visualized this shot is to have the dancer against a dark background, but you can still ascertain where they're standing, what the backdrop is. In this instance, it's gonna be woodlands. And the other reason I picked a dark background is because we're using colored powder with the speed lights illuminating the powder as it explodes. That's how I'm visualizing it in my head. So I've decided today to use the Nikon Z7 II and I'm using a 24 to 70 mm f2.8. It's probably slightly overexposed, so we're gonna increase, or we'll decrease the ISO. Go again, that looks better. Now the reason I'm using my Z7 II it is my go-to camera. I could go up to the Z9, but I am shooting portrait photography technically, uh, but with a dancer. Dancer is gonna be moving. Yeah, I could fully utilize the 20 frames per second on the Z9. The Z7 II, only 10 frames per second. I'm using flash. Now, I don't have a battery pack for my flash. It will be a single shot. So, I cannot use continuous high. I am literally just using single shots. So I've got to get my timing right. So let's capture that movement and make sure that she remains in focus. We're going to need a fast shutter speed. So I'm sort of looking around about 2,000 of a second. Next is my aperture. Now, we're using colour powder. I've checked the wind, what direction it's going. I do not want to be plastered. I don't want my camera looking like it's just falling out of a packet of smiles. I've got to make sure that I'm not standing down wind. I basically position myself around about 15 to 20 metres away. And I've used a zoom on the 24 to 70. I'm shooting around about 35 mil. Um, I still want a type of landscape background because I still want the tree line, I still want a bit of the sky in the shot and obviously want the grass to the side and my model right in the middle so I still need a wide angle. I'm actually going to drop my aperture down to f4 so it's still nice and wide it's going to let in a lot of light which is great because then it means I don't have to increase the ISO and bring noise into my shot so my ISO is going to be 100. Now I'm going to do another video a more detailed video on how to use flash photography in specifically SB5000. When I'm setting up this shot as I mentioned before I want to make sure I get the environment right before I introduce these lights so I've made sure the backdrop is dark but not too dark and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rely on the camera settings to make sure that my subject remains in focus while the lights which will be positioned to the left and right are illuminating my subject sufficiently to capture the shot the sun is dropping rapid and we're ready to go stay there it's good to practice shot okay so I'm gonna count you down yeah right I'm good you're good right everyone ready yep. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> I run out the way, I love it. 
Oh, that's good. But I want this powder captured as it sort of explodes over the top of her, which should look amazing. That's what it looks like in my head. Whether in reality that happens, who knows? So on my first shot, I found I had it on single point focus, which didn't really help. Now I kept it on there because previously I've shot dancers on single point focus, it's been fine. However, obviously the light's dipping, and I don't know, for some reason the focus system struggled a little bit with the movement. So as you'll see here, uh, the top of the model's um, body is actually out of focus. That's just purely because of the movement. So I think she's obviously moved from where my focal point was. And I've obviously got excited and not really paid attention and now it's out of focus. So the first attempt failed. Okay, so I've got a few options here. I can either go wide, which would do the trick. I think I'm gonna go just for auto area, auto focus. Uh, what this would do is just basically throw a load of squares up on the screen, looking for my subject. And in theory, it should keep her in focus. Stand inside the width in theory, it should just go straight back. So it should be like a U over the top. Yeah. From where we are there. Well the sun's pretty much gone down now and it's starting to go night time and we're losing the light. We're, we're bordering quitting pretty much. We've got one more attempt at this and then we've got to pack up and call the curtains. That's it. So this time, if you take a deep breath, I always give a countdown. Three, two, one. Literally she's gone up. I see her head in the viewfinder and it's just flicked back. I've hit the button, closed my eyes and prayed to God. And yeah, I've basically looked on the back of my screen and my mouth just hit the floor. That's good. Are you happy with that? Yeah. That, that's pretty much, well, I don't think we're gonna get any better than that. I was honestly blown away. When you get something in your head and you actually succeed in it, it's one of the greatest rewards when you do photography. You spend all this time planning a photograph. If you think about it logically, it was just one shot. One photograph is what I've walked away with. Is it worth it? 100%. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you once again for subscribing. Check back soon. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And if you want to, please feel free to leave a comment down below. For now, toodle bit.